Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to transfer data with Netcat. And I'll be doing this with uh, two examples. One of them is going to be a simple chat uh, application. Well, not really an application, uh, but it'll be a simple client server connection that has a uh, chat functionality. And this is to uh, this this is to expose or to show you uh, how powerful Netcat is. And Netcat is. And then I'll show you, I'll also show you how to transfer data from client to server and vice versa. All right, so let's get started. Now, as I mentioned, uh, client uh, with Netcat, uh, you can initialize two types of connections. Uh, you can have the client and the server, and that is how data or connections are written either in TCP or UDP. All right, so let's get started with creating our chat application. Now, given that one, uh, we have to have an instance of a server and an instance of a client, I'm going to set up the Kali operating system or the Kali computer as my server as my Netcat server, and I'm going to set up my host operating system, which is Windows 10, as my uh, client, all right? And uh, I'll show you how that works. So I already have Netcat installed on my Windows 10 operating system. And of course, you can run this on any uh, configuration you have. Uh, and uh, just to test out the functionality uh, and to understand what's going on here. All right, so I'm just going to open up my command prompt right over here, and we'll keep that open while we work on creating the server. All right, so I'm going to open up my terminal back and go into Kali Linux. And uh, if we just open up the uh, help menu right over here, uh, you can see that we will be using uh, the n command, which essentially is no DNS, v, which is, which is verbose, uh, and we will be using the l command, which means we are listening. That is for the server connection. So it will bind and listen for incoming connections on your local IP. Uh, and we'll be looking uh, and we'll be also using the P option right over here, which allows us to specify the port that we'll be listening on. That is for the server connection. It, will, it can also be used uh, to connect to a port as we'll be looking at with uh, the uh, the client. All right. So to set up the server, all we need to do is clear. Let me just clear that up. Let me just clear that up. And all we need to do is type in NC uh, and the syntax is now going to be NVLP. All right. So we're saying uh, no DNS. Uh, we want to verb we want verbose data or verbose output. We are listening uh, on our local host or local IP, and the port that we want to use is port one two three four. Just a simple example. All right. So once I hit enter, it's going to start a server. Or it's going to start the server on this local IP. And you might be wondering, well, what's your local IP? And that's a very very good question. So before we actually run that, let me just type in ifconfig. You can see that my local IP for my local area network is 192.168.1.110 or 110. All right. So now that I know that, we know that uh, the server is going to be running on 192.168.1.110 on port 1234. Now, of course, you can change the ports and test it however you like. It's all up to you. All right. So netcat nvlp and port 1234, and I'm going to hit enter, and the server is running. You can see it's going to tell you that it's listening on your local IP on the port 1234, and it's going to wait for connections. All right, so let's connect to this server with uh, my host operating system, which is Windows 10. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in NC, and again, we're using the NV command because we are going to, we, we don't want any DNS, and we want verbose output. And now we need to type in the server's IP address. So we're going to type in 192.168.1.110. All right. And now we specify the port, which is port 1234. So in this uh, in this scenario, the client is essentially connecting to the server on that on the port that it is listening on. So once I hit enter, you can see that is it is going to connect and it'll give us the host name of unknown. Don't worry about that. And it's going to tell us that the port is open and it'll give you an, an empty prompt right over here. That means that the connection was successful. So to test the, this out, we're going to be testing the chat functionality and how data is transferred. So let me just uh, minimize this if I can. And let me bring up the command prompt. So I can say, for example, from the client and the server, you know, vice versa. Uh, for example, in here, in, in the Windows command prompt, I can type in hello. And once I hit hello, you can see that uh, it is displayed on the server hello. So I can also type a message back. So I can say hello, client how are you? All right, and I can hit enter. And that is going to be sent to the client. So let me just open up my command prompt. And as you can see, hello, client, how are you? And I can say, uh, uh, I can say, uh, I am fine, server. Uh, 
how about you and you know you can go on and on like that and it'll be printed back right over here to the server so really awesome stuff you can see that netcat can be used for uh, a lot of stuff and uh, this is very basic data transfer but it gets really interesting when we talk about uh, saving data to a file for example which is what i want to show you now all right so i'm just going to uh, go back into my full screen mode here and i'm going to uh, close that instance i'm going to close the server and now what we're looking to do is we want to transfer data that is going to be sent by the client uh, into a file, for example. All right. So let's say I wanted to send all the, the data that is being sent, uh, you know, from the client uh, to a specific file. So, you know, it could be anything. It could be uh, a simple, uh, it could be text, could be data, could be commands that can be used, you know, to, uh, to, to run on FTP. You know, whatever you, comes in your mind, you can use this for that. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in NC. And again, we're, we're using the same syntax for starting up a server on port 1234. However, we want all the data that is incoming to the server to be saved into a file. Now, the file can be any file. It can be an EXE file. It can be a PDF file, a TXT file, which is what I'm going to use. So I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to call it data.txt. So any data that is going to be sent from the client uh, will be stored in this file. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to start the server like normal. And uh, we, we want to just minimize this. And let me just open up my command prompt here. And uh, that server closed up uh, as you would expect. So I'm going to connect uh, with a new instance. So I'm just going to type in uh, like so. So netcat uh, nv 192.168.1.110 and port 1234. And I'm going to hit enter. And it, we're going to get the connection. And now if I type in hello from the client, you can see that no data will be displayed on the server side because all the data is being stored in the data.txt file. Really awesome. Now we'll confirm this in a second, but I can add as many as mu as much data as I want. So, for example, we could uh, we could be sending or writing a script. That is how uh, penetration testers go about transferring data from their operating system to the target operating system. So let's say they do not have direct access or a shell, uh, but they do have um, you know connection through Netcat. Uh, and they want to send a, a list of commands that should be executed. So we could say, for example, uh, we want to execute a few commands like go back, uh, uh, go back. And uh, we can then say, uh, for example, uh, run a following exploit like so and, uh, you know, exit. And of course, that would be in the form of a bash script or whatever you want. So that means the data.txt would have to be uh, a shell.txt. And I'll show you that in a second. So if I hit enter, that data is going to be sent and it's going to be stored in the data.txt file. So what I can show you uh, or uh, to demonstrate this, uh, let me just close this server. And if we just cut the uh, the data.txt file, you can see that all the data that we sent from the client will be displayed here. So I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, all the data was displayed exactly as we entered it. Now you can see how important and how useful this can be for a penetration tester. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this. Uh, so I'm just going to say get, uh, remove the data.txt file because uh, we don't need it. And what I'm going to do now is I want to store. Uh, I want to set. I want to store all the commands, all the data into a data.shell uh, uh, into a data.shell script. All right. So then we'll execute this script and we'll be able to send the commands that we want to be saved and executed. All right. So. I'm going to hit enter and I'm just going to go back into my Windows uh, command prompt and I'm going to just hit enter. We're going to connect to the server. I'm going to hit enter. And now we can say something like uh, we can create the shebang. So bin bash and we can create a simple script. We can say echo uh, this. Uh, this was sent uh, over netcat, you know, something really simple netcat and that'll essentially just print that out and um yeah that's pretty that's a very very basic script and uh, uh that should be it so after this we can also you know then prompt it to launch itself but that would be redundant so i'm just going to exit i'm just going to close the server and if we list the file right now you can see that we have the data.sh file so let's see if we can run it of course we have to give it uh, executable permission so chmod 775 and we're going to use data.sh and I'm going to hit enter and let's launch the data.shell uh, script and I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, the script was successfully compiled over Netcat, which is excellent. And this is a fantastic way of transferring data between uh, client and server and vice versa. You can do this as well. 
So you can see that the script ran and it, and it tells us this was sent over Netcat. And you can understand the implications of, uh, you know, you know, transferring commands. Uh, in the form of a bash script they can run a whole multi multitude of other services and uh, you know give you further access to the system that you're trying to exploit all right so that is going to be it for this video and i'll be uh, seeing you in the next video